it's it's a it's an incredible opportunity to watch teachers and hear about teachers from day one through the entire process and to hear how teachers are supportive we have conversations very difficult conversations at times um, when we have teachers who are struggling but what I find interesting is as I sit there listening to the consultant teacher talk about a client when I listen to the perspective of each member on par oftentimes I'll sit there and have I'll have already formed a judgment but just through that conversation and listening to each other my perspective may completely shift 180 degrees by the end of the conversation and that's a really important piece to remember in all this I can think back to one one part discussion where um, there was a, a, um, a client we were discussing who we had very serious concerns about and I can remember every person on, on the entire panel saying the same thing, very concerning, where are we going to go with this person? Um, but then one, one person, it was a teacher on par, started talking about the perspective of being in the building, being in the environment that the school, um, in the school that we're talking about. And that one perspective shifted the entire conversation and gave us something else to think about and how to support that teacher. So furthering that, thinking about the PAR committee, um, I think it's very important that it's built with the foundation of, um, of leaving your job title at the door and having conversations around best practices, conversations around teachers. And um, it's not about who you are, it's about what's best for teachers and getting them to grow. What is the most glaring difference between our, our former system and what we're yielding today with teachers coming in with the peer assistance in review? Well, I think in order to really talk about this, I need to kind of, you know, put the main factor that was discussed in the beginning right out there on the table. There was definitely um, some perceptual changes that needed to happen in terms of how recommendations for tenure were going to be made. And, and it's interesting because even when I approach this topic with other superintendents, I kind of get a funny look um, sometimes with a question about why would administration kind of give up their um, right to be making tenure recommendations and allow teacher leaders to take part in that process. And it really is a change in mindset and in terms of explaining that to people, I think they really need to understand what it involves and that the level of support given to these new teachers because teacher leaders are so closely involved with them over the course of their probationary period, it is far beyond what administrators are able to do all on their own. So it really does work hand in hand. And in terms of the difference that I see, um, I, I'm gonna lay it right out there. I, I think that the process has really um, shown us that there are times where sometimes people maybe don't make it and that's not really the career that they should be in. And after a lot of support and guidance and growth or lack of growth, uh, there's a lot of evidence in terms of making good decisions and making sure that we have the best teachers in front of our students. What's the difference between working with kids and adults? I don't want to say that there's not a difference because certainly there's a difference because I'm working with my colleagues. I'm working you know, in a differentiated model in that I'm meeting each new teacher where they are in their practice. But I'm also building together with them. So we're co-working, we're co-teaching, we're co-planning. We're working together to learn all about the best practices of teaching and then right away implementing them into a real classroom with real kids and trying it for real. Not just talking about it or reading about it, but going back in and setting goals and working with kids and really doing it. Reflecting back on your time so far, um, what do you find has been your, your greatest challenge? Um, and then, which has been your greatest reward out of, out of the work that you're doing? Okay, so my greatest challenge, I think, has been um, uh, learning more about teaching than I ever have before and finding the time to learn it myself so that I can share it with the teachers that I'm working with. So I think the biggest challenge for me is um, kind of letting go of I have to learn it first and then I can share it and learning to grow and work together. Like I'm not sure what student self-assessment looks like in kindergarten. 
but let's investigate and learn together and then we did the client and I really worked on that part of her practice and you know she actually came up with wonderful strategies around it um, what does it mean to teach chemistry in high school I, I, I've never taught chemistry in high school but I want to learn that with this teacher and we can grow and learn together so learning that as a teacher you always want to be the person who has the knowledge as a consultant teacher, you are the person who's there to support every single day and help grow and learn together. So I think my biggest accomplishment or the thing that I'm most proud of is the support and the relationships that I've built with these brand new teachers. And I feel like um, over the course of three years, the teachers that have gone on to get tenure, I feel proud of them like you know they're my kids in my classroom. And I'm so excited to walk in their classrooms and see all of the wonderful things that they're doing. Um, what do you think has been the most challenging part, portion of your probationary career? Uh, I would just say knowing that it's okay to fail. Like knowing you some, you're not going to get highly effective in everything and I'm, I'm a perfectionist so I would like to get highly effective all the way down the rubric but that won't happen and it's okay and it's a learning curve and you just keep going and it gets easier. So if you had to give any advice to a new teacher that uh, is going to be assigned a consultant teacher, what would that advice be? Well my advice would be as long as it's done like our school district has done it, that the consultant teachers are really trustworthy and that they're there to help. Um, it's intimidating because they are evaluating you, but it's not just an evaluator. They're definitely more of like a, like a counselor and a helper and they're not judging you and they want you to take risks and they're there to help you in so many ways as an expert teacher. Um, not meant to be intimidating or judgmental or or scary. So it took me, I would say, like three months to realize that in those three months. Your, your work with a CT is, is highly relational and it's a professional relationship so therefore um, there's a lot of conversation about your own professional practice. So can you share with us how you've been able to balance the, 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 um, the critical lens that sometimes comes to the work that you, you discuss. Because, I mean, teaching is very, it's a very um, um, rewarding career, mm -hmm. um, but it's also very personal. So people are, are saying, this was good, but here's how it might improve. So how do you balance that? Um, you have to take your feelings out of it, I guess, and just think it's best for your students. Um, taking lots of time to reflect. I, I've had the opportunity to go on lots of learning walks, so even though I may, like my questioning for example, maybe wasn't effective or highly effective my first year, but taking, like just putting my personal feelings aside and just realizing like, okay, it'll be better for my students if I really learn how to do this better and go observe teachers who are effective and highly effective and just, I mean, luckily for me, I, I, it wasn't a problem. Like I was just excited to learn more and mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. So these learning walks sound really dynamic. So can you give me like can you give me a, a what a learning walk would look like? Um, a learning walk. You you tell your CT areas that you would like to learn more. Um, for example, my second year, I was really interested in learning more about Lucy and the writing process in right. a kindergarten classroom. So she contacted teachers who loved Lucy, were strong in Lucy had great ideas and um, invited us, or they invited us into their classroom to go observe their writing block. I was able to talk to students about it and see growth in their writing folders and so. How did you and Jenny um, develop that relationship to get into some really deep conversations about students and instruction? Right. Um, at first it was intimidating. Of course it's intimidating having someone come into your classroom and observe you and evaluate you and you don't know who they are. And my first initial understanding of a CT was they, they come in, they evaluate you. Um, but I quickly learned it wasn't that. It was more just guidance. And it never, I can say from my, from my experience, that it was never negative. Of course, there were things that I had to work on, but it was presented in a way on, hmm, how can we, look at what you did here. How can you change it to make it more like this? So it was always more guidance than being told that you did something wrong. Um, and it was never like, mm, you need to change this, go figure out how to. It was, I was given strategies and 
skills and different ways that I could approach it. So for me, I didn't really, it was intimidating at first, but I didn't feel threatened. What evidence can you share that would support that new teachers in PAR, um, that the PAR process and the work with a consultant teacher and the principal um, has improved student performance? It's a tough, it's a tough connection. Um, when I think about, I guess, the high yield indicators that we've determined as a district and the focus that we've seen the consultant teachers really drive our new teachers toward. Um, you can see those practices alive in the classroom. You can see a teacher who comes in the door from day one with very minimal exposure to that, and you can watch them grow their practice along with, you walk into some of these teachers, the ones that have been doing this for a while, you walk into a classroom where there's true collaborative learning going on. It's, um, it's a project-based environment. You have um, differentiation like I've never seen anywhere else. You have teachers now that are at the level of differentiation where every single child in the classroom is challenged at his or her level. And that happens, I've seen it in kindergarten classrooms where there's center work going on and even the centers are leveled to each child. So that would have never happened a couple of years ago and I attribute that directly to the work of having a consultant teacher assigned and working directly and really pushing teachers to the next level. Excellent, excellent. What dividend comes back to the district and why is it so valued? Well, I think it's valued because over the course of the last few years since the program's been in place, we see the difference. The district sees the difference, the administration sees the difference, the teachers see the difference, and the Board of Education sees the difference in terms of uh, the quality of, of teaching and um, the quality of the new teachers that we're then giving tenure. Uh, there's there's no doubt they're they're able to show a great deal of professional growth. They've had an incredible amount of support along the way, and they're stronger in their practice, and that certainly spills over into the students and to the classroom. And engage with a consultant teacher and you engage fully in your classroom. Um, can you make any correlation between your work with a consultant teacher and your work as a as a classroom instructor? and how that may have improved student achievement in your life? Um, yes, just meeting with my consultant teacher on a regular basis. She was able to see ideas from other classrooms and suggest them for mine, like um, measuring their success or self-assessment in a kindergarten classroom, like helping them reflect on their learning. That was really difficult for me at first, so um, my consultant teacher really helped me with that, and that way the kids were given more opportunities that I wouldn't have known.